Well, my name is Lillian Pitt. My Indian name is Wakamu, and I'm Warm Springs, Wasco, and Yakima, otherwise from the gorge. And uh, my uh, grandmother uh, was raised on the Washington side, and my mother, mother's parents were raised in Sililo area. How would you describe your artwork? If you were you're an artist of what, would you say? Oh, I'd say I'm a multimedia artist. I do do so many different things, and uh, usually at the inspiration of my friends who say, have you tried such and such? Mm -hmm. And I say no, then they take it upon themselves to teach me. And <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm learning something for a short period of time, and and uh, it's so much fun, but then it involves too many different processes, so I move on mm -hmm. and do things that I can do in my studio. And what, what are those things that you love to do in your studio? I like making little critters, you know. Uh, sometimes I, I'm in the mood to make endangered or threatened or extinct species and uh, making myself feel better. And I do the stick and dins and do coyote and do bear and and um, but sometimes I'm I do people and then call them stick and dins, which are mythical beings that live in the mountains and they'll guide a good person to safety if they're lost or deeper into the forest if they're bad. Mm -hmm. And so wonderful stories were told to me as a kid. So you um, are doing a solo show here at Columbia Center for the Arts in April. We're very honored to have you. And I Thank want to you. talk about the show. Okay. But before we do, um, as I mentioned, your, your story of your life is very rich and abundant. And there's so many ways to describe parts of you. Yeah, I've, I've made a list here. I've got you as an internationally acclaimed artist. And you're also a collaborator and a mentor and a steward for Native American cultures and heritage. And you're a state treasurer, and you're a storyteller. And I think what, um, what I feel strongly when I'm with you is that you're an elder, and you're also a woman who lives her truth. And so that's, it's a great honor to be with you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So um, to talk about the show, what, to tell us the name of the show and how you came up with that name. Okay, well, um, it, the title of the show is Ancestors Known and Unknown. And um, I have this book uh, that my neighbor gave me. I lost, I loaned it and never got it back. And, it's an ancient book. It's written by Emory Stone, and uh, and so and I thought, well, these things are thousands of years old, and uh, and I I think I'll make a series of them and let people know that we were creating thousands of years ago and uh, making beautiful, useful things and and making fun things and. Uh, I think I'll do that, but I'll do it in glass and uh, in cast glass, and so and that was really fun, and I I enjoyed doing replicas and, and or duplicates, whatever you call them, but in glass they kind of transpose into their own little individual self, and uh, they're really quite fun, and and Brad Lorraine did and his wife Deborah did the fabrication around them because I was so busy and so they 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 put their energy in it and that's what I like when I'm sharing my work mm -hmm. and where did you create the the the, the are there castings like the the, the there are pieces that are cast and then there are pieces that are blown mm -hmm. and sand cast sand sand cast casted yeah. as well so it, was that in a studio and did you work with the glass artist or how did that no, come to be? No, I uh, 
what I did was uh, for the sand cast is, is I used an actual piece to press into the clay mm -hmm. and then the molten glass was poured into the cavity mm -hmm. and then it's put into the kiln and then cleaned off as much as possible. And uh, with the cast glass I make the original out of clay and then so then that goes through a whole big process of, of uh, getting it ready to go inside the kiln and so it takes forever to do the casting and um, and then I only do the sand casting is when there's a workshop yeah. and uh, and same with the blown glass I collaborated with Dan Friday who is a Lummi native and he is uh, uh, amazing he worked with Chihuly and Preston Singletary and all these famous artists and uh, and we did a collaboration and and of course I uh, I can't do one or two pieces I did about 14 and 16 pieces in in about four days and so I like working yeah clearly <laughs> well we, we all benefit from it um, so th this particular show, um, we talked earlier, you shared with Rachel and me in a previous conversation that, 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 that you wanted to have a show at Columbia Center for the Arts and um, that, that it had been a while and that, that there, and you had some comments about um, artists from the area, from the uh, Native American um, uh, tribes in the area and also just people of color showing their work. Um, in this the center and I'd love to hear more about that if you and so well sometimes I get uppity you know <laughs> so I kind of wanted you know to see something other than the usual mm -hmm. and uh, I thought there's enough artists to go around and uh, and lets people know that we're all still here we're all still creating and and thriving and trying to thrive and um, and we've got a lot to say you know and um, and and using the diversity it, it just enriches you know because art heals and uh, and every one of these artists are are uh, excellent artists mm -hmm. and uh, their craft work, their artistry is just amazing. Mm -hmm. And I always want to share my work whenever I get an opportunity. You know, there's enough work to go around. Well, let's spread the joy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I think that's what it was about. And I didn't really want to shame anybody. You know, that's, that's not me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, when you see this show, you'll be real pleased oh, when, when it comes together. Um, we, um, it's, the timing is fabulous, and I really appreciate you being uppity and, <laughs> and, and voicing um, your, um, you know, just what you believe in and what you think is important, and, it's, and it, it only informs us and makes us a better center, so thank yeah. you for that, oh. absolutely. So um, you have invited some artists to join you in the show, um, there'll be four artists showing their work in the lobby and then you'll have your solo exhibit in the gallery and then you've also invited some artists to um, sell the work in our retail space and it's a mixture of um, uh, um, Native Americans from different tribes and different parts but they're all from the Gorge area, correct? Oh no, most of them are mm -hmm. and um, like Pat Horsley was, was from um, the three corners, you know, um, Kirkland or one of those, and, and has lived in Portland for quite a while, and, and, um, and um, Debbie has lived in, in Cascade Locks forever with her beautiful forest souls. Um, and then Toma has done murals up and down the gorge and has worked with the Confluence Project and uh, which I was always involved with the Confluence Project as well and so it's, it's a wonderful organization that 
bring science and, and art in, into the children's lives and, and lets them know all about the gorge and where they're from. And that's important to me is if we learn where we're from. I remember you did a, a, a mask workshop with st uh, young kids in um, east of the Dalles. I yeah. think it was. It was just, that was amazing. I remember learning about that. I must have done about 40 workshops yeah. in the gorge. I bet you did. <laughs> I bet you did. You did them all over. All it's true. Over. You, were, you, were, you were very game. It was wonderful. It was really great. Um, okay, so um, you, you have, you're going to have several pieces in the show that will represent glass as well as um, some masks. Mask. Submask, onagama, and raku glass, mm -hmm. uh, fired uh, clay, and um, I'll have, I think, one bronze. And um, you know, when the when the COVID started, all the foundries had to close down, you know, and everything closed down, and so it made getting extra work really hard and so I had to find the places where they were open you know and uh, and so but the Onagama pieces I go down with Richard Rowland and I hope he's going to have pieces and uh, he's part Hawaiian and he makes beautiful beautiful uh, bowls and, and uh, mugs and stuff like that and so yeah so I have to go where the work is mm -hmm. and uh, so it, it's why there's always a mixture of things. Mm -hmm. It's great and it's, it's also a, a testament to you being a collaborator and working with other yeah. artists to create work. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you feel about being a mentor? It's fun. It, it's uh, I feel like um, there's so much that we don't know about ourselves, you know, of where we're from and our history, our ancestry. And, um, you know, so I can help them find out who they are and then they can use some part of that for their artwork. And, uh, you know, to help them find that is just really amazing. and. And then to be able to, to do it professionally, you know, follow the rules. <laughs> Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Follow the rules and get your work there on time. Give them what they want and, mm -hmm. and uh, be professional, be early, mm -hmm. you know, and little things like that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, I try to do that without being an, a nag, naggy. And, uh, so we usually do it over lunch or something like that. And how does the mentorship um, find itself? How do, how do um, young emerging artists find you or how, how does that connection get made? I usually find them. Mm -hmm. When I see talent, mm -hmm. I say, you know, you, you're doing really a good job. Would you like a little bit of advice? Mm -hmm. And so, and then it's, it's hard to know when to quit. Do you feel like you had a mentor when, when you were? I had many, yeah. just just tons of yeah. people who are so caring and so giving and uh, so much, so willing to share what they knew with me. Mm -hmm. So it's not my idea. Mm -hmm. It you know it was all given to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, passing yeah. it on. Yeah. Well, it's a it's how the world should work. <laughs> wouldn't it be nice? Yeah, wouldn't it be yeah. nice? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I want to go back to something you said um, earlier, because one of the things that interests me about this show and your work um, is this desire, this interest in looking back at how you know ten thousand years and forward about how tools and and objects were used um, in everyday life and how that continues on today in, in art forms and in various other um, forms today. So when, when we look, when I look at your work, there is sort of a sense of other, other place, like it takes me somewhere else. It takes me away from here and takes me into a, a more, um, more spiritual and a more connection with the earth and, mm -hmm. and, and another time. 
And I'm wondering that in your in, in the in your in your practice in your making of your work, do you have a spiritual practice or a ritual? Like you said that you you know go into your studio and create animals and stick figures and stuff. Is there sort of a conscious spiritual practice or that you that's part of how you come to your pieces or come to your work? Um, my mother was very spiritual and. Um, you know, I think I got a little bit of that, a whole lot of that caring from her, caring of the planet, caring of the plants, caring of, of, of the, the animals that feed us, caring of the salmon, you know, and that all comes out. And uh, um, I don't have, um, anything spiritual or any ceremonies or anything. What I, I have a Tibetan bell I ring to, to give me, let me know work starting. That's about it. Yeah, so, and I just don't ring it when I'm quitting. I'm just out of there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the meditation is just always going on. It's yes. Just, um, that's great. That's awesome. Um, wonderful. Okay, so I, I did write a question that I have to read because it's sort of a mouthful and it's something to think about. But um, your, wor your work is inspired by honoring a time of abundance and oneness with nature and the natural world. And today our country is going through a painful awakening and reckoning of racial injustice. Um, what do you hope for in this time, which hopefully is a time of growth and change? Oh my, yeah. I think that I hope that people will take time to reflect about uh, about their past and the injustices that they have seen and the inequities of, uh, of, of where we're working, you know, now why aren't there more people of color around me? And maybe doing something about it. And uh, more people thinking like that to, to make it more fair. But that will happen, but what I'm worrying about is the planet. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the uh, thawing and up, up north and, and the polar bears running out of their ice to, to you know, it, uh, it just makes me so sad. Mm -hmm. You know, I want this fixed and, and I want it fixed now. I want them to stop fracking and I want them to, to, to leave Mother Earth alone. And, uh, and grow things and, and, uh, and just to take care, take care of it. We have to nurture each other and nurture the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are, are a lot of the Native Americans' dreams, but they're also indigenous dreams and, and uh, I don't know about all the other people you know, it's it's uh, it's a fast-paced world, and I think we've been forced to slow down, which is good. You know, it, it has helped me to to go within and think about what it is I'm doing. Art is it does, and you mentioned this earlier. Art does play a role in healing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I think being able to look at your work and sort of be transported into, you know, a, con a different kind of a connection yeah. with nature and with symbols and with, with you know, heritage is, is you know, part of that healing yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can always hope. Mm -hmm. We got that going for us. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Is there anything else you would like to say about the show and oh, being here? And it's just going to be so nice to show. And uh, you know, I think of my elders, Mary Schlick, and, and uh, you know, she was so precious. And, and uh, um, I'm going to miss her because every time I see this space, I see Mary, and and um, 
it's, it's, you know, the elders, the elders are so precious. And so I, uh, I'm honoring my elders. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and thank you for letting us be a part of that. And we honor you and look forward to doing more with you. I really hope that we can collaborate on not only um, bringing your work back, but also working with you on your, the emerging artists that you are finding that, mm -hmm. that you think would, would really inform and inspire us here at CCA. It'd be great to have okay. them. I'd be happy to. Be great. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.